Dozens of parents and children have spent the night in schools designated as polling stations in the Spanish region of Catalonia. They were trying to prevent police closing them down ahead of a referendum on independence due to take place tomorrow. Thousands of Catalan independence supporters are gathering for a final rally in Barcelona ahead of the vote, which has been declared illegal by the government. Uh, well, we're joined now live from Madrid by the Spanish Foreign Minister, Alfonso Dastis. Uh, Minister, many thanks for being with us. Um, do you think that the referendum will be going ahead tomorrow? No, <clears throat> no, it won't. <clears throat> um, uh, there is no referendum. There are no uh, voting premises. There are no uh, ballot papers. Uh, there are no authorities to check, um, you know, the authenticity of the results. There may be some sham voting in um, um, places and streets uh, and certain places, but, um, but uh, I don't think there is going to be a referendum tomorrow, no. I mean, you, you suggest that there could be some sham voting. I mean, uh, estimates vary, but we're potentially going to be seeing millions of people uh, casting a vote tomorrow. It's difficult to dismiss that, uh, dismiss that out of hand as something illegal, something uh, that the Spanish government doesn't have to pay heed to. Well, listen, um, that it is illegal, it is not the government that has said it, it's the, the courts, the constitutional court, um, you know, uh, applying a constitution that, uh, by the way, is um, similar to the, uh, almost every constitution in, in uh, at least the Western world. Um, whether there will be millions of uh, people coming out to vote, we'll, we'll see. Uh, but in any case, uh, the government has already um, said that um, we are ready uh, when this um, uh, defiance to the um, legal order and to democracy, by the way, uh, is over, uh, that uh, everyone is uh, ready to sit down and talk about uh, the future and uh, ways to accommodate um, Catalonia within the Spanish um, state. The problem that many people in the Catalan region see with all of this, and indeed uh, more widely, is that the Spanish constitution essentially says that the Spanish state is indivisible. This constitution can only be changed uh, with two-thirds uh, of the individual component parts of Spain uh, coming together. So, so it's difficult to see a set of circumstances in which there could be a legal vote on Catalonian independence ever being held. Well, listen, the Constitution can be amended through uh, regular, ordinary, legal and democratic procedures. It's foreseen, so we certainly can, can do that. Uh, and in any case, I don't think you would be ready to allow to, uh, a part of a system to vote for, for the whole. If you are, let's say, in a co-op or condominium, uh, you know, a single uh, tenant cannot do its will and uh, just uh, decide to, to disregard the rules that apply to yeah, everyone minister, else. Minister, minister, I mean, uh, Catalonia is something rather bigger than a single tenant in, in, in a building, isn't it? I mean, it's a significant region in Spain. It provides 20% of your GDP. And let's be honest about all of this. It's the financial loss uh, that Spain could endure as a, as a result of uh, Catalonian independence uh, that's driving the government's hand in all of this. Well, no, really, um, you know, um, the uh, Catalan government, the current Catalan government has been pushing a sort of uh, PR campaign that is um, disregarding the facts. They are, I think, the champions of alternative facts. If you look at the figures um, provided, even officially by the Catalan government, um, uh, Catalonia uh, pays in taxes rather more or less what it uh, represents in terms of the GDP of Spain and receive back um, a, a, an amount which is similar to the uh, portion of the population which it represents in the Spanish state. So um, there is no way you can claim that uh, Spain robs us or, or oppresses us. Uh, let's talk about the, the practicalities of, uh, of the vote going ahead tomorrow, even if only limited to a number of polling stations. There is a real fear that we could be seeing violence on the streets of Barcelona and, and elsewhere. I mean, in circumstances where a vote is pushed forward, I mean, can you guarantee uh, that the Spanish government will not send the police in, the army in, in a heavy-handed, violent manner? Well, I think we have proven that already. Um, the um, the uh, law enforcement uh, officers are there showing a lot of restraint 
uh, acting in a proportional way. And if there is violence, it's not coming from them. It's, uh, even if it's not physical violence, there is intimidation, there is harassment uh, coming out from uh, groups that are supporting the referendum. So we will do as much as we possibly can to ensure that there is, um, you know, peaceful is uh, peaceful, that there is no social disturbance or unrest. But uh, I'm afraid it's not depending on us. But uh, we will do all we possibly can. Uh, but, but you say you do all that you possibly can. I mean, where has the negotiation been with the Catalan government and all of this? There has been absolutely no ground given politically. Uh, we know from the latest polling uh, that there is perhaps not, as things stand, a majority for independence. You know, this, this approach uh, by Mariano Rajoy is only going to drive more people uh, to supporting the cause of Catalan independence. Well, um, I think everyone is entitled to its own opinion. I don't think um, uh, it is because of the um, uh, position that um, Mr. Rajoy and his government is taking that uh, uh, people will be uh, driven to, to support uh, the referendum in, in Catalonia. We have already shown our um, uh, readiness to enter into a dialogue, but of course it has to be done without preconditions of accepting a referendum that unfortunately is not uh, foreseen or authorized in the Spanish Constitution. And it, that's not a matter of, I mean, it's a matter of democracy and it's a matter of the rule of law. Uh, the the uh, democracy is not uh, above uh, the rule of law. Uh, democracy is guaranteed by the rule of law. Yeah, but, but any referendum needs to have, you know, legal legitimacy. It also needs to have political legitimacy. And the Catalonian government would suggest that the support that they had in the regional elections, the polling data all shows that there is a substantial body of opinion there that believes that Catalonia should be independent. I mean, can you perceive, in the aftermath of whatever happens tomorrow, a better deal for the Catalan region being on the table? Well, um, we'll certainly try and look at a possible better deal, as you say, but uh, let me tell you that um, uh, the, the reality is not as um, the Catalan uh, present, them, present the, that reality. Um, uh, they are not being oppressed. Catalan is spoken, uh, you know, widely in Catalonia. Um, if there is someone who has difficulties speaking their own language, it's those uh, Spanish speakers who are still there. Uh, and they have, if you read the uh, Statute of uh, Autonomy of Catalonia, um, and you look at the powers and the competences that they have, you would see that, um, uh, you know, hardly any other um, autonomous um, region or federated state in, in, in a federal state has many more powers than Catalonia has. Uh, let's, uh, Minister, if we can, uh, talk about another issue around self-determination, the vote taken by the British public uh, to leave the European Union. It's a, a bumpy negotiating process, uh, as far as we can tell. I mean, what is your view in all of this? I mean, is the European Union doing its utmost to try to ensure, first, that Britain gets a bad deal, and second, uh, to discourage others from following the UK's example? No, I don't think so. I mean, we uh, definitely regret uh, the result of the vote, uh, but we are not out to punish um, uh, the UK because it would be tantamount to punishing ourselves. And I'm talking not only about the European Union at large, but Spain in particular. So what we are after is a successful Brexit, um, and um, we, we are working towards that, that goal. So um, that's, that's our position, that's very clear. And by, and, uh, as a Probability of uh, contagion, I think, uh, again, reality is that um, in countries that you may have thought that uh, would be tempted to follow uh, the British example, such as uh, Denmark or Sweden, um, the support for the EU has really increased after the, uh, the Brexit referendum. Still, it, it seems likely that countries like Spain will be affected if we reach the end of this negotiating process and trade deals have not been worked out. I mean, what are you saying to Brussels as regards the, the, the lack of progress, which means it seems unlikely we're going to be talking UK-EU trade deals until you know, sometime next year? 
Well, uh, you know, we are definitely uni united um, um, behind our negotiator. We want to make sure that we have uh, a successful and orderly um, exit of, of the UK, but we are very much interested in keeping a strong uh, relation and have a, uh, you know, a, a trade deal that is uh, good for, for both parties. We have, you know, in the UK is the first country of destination of our foreign investment. Um, over 17 million Brits come to Spain every year. So, I mean, we are definitely, um, we will be definitely committed to ensuring that this um, ends out uh, with a success. And there will have to be uh, some transitional uh, deal. But we will work, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we will come to, to uh, an agreement that is satisfactory for both parties. Uh, and, Minister, whilst we have you, I I'm wondering what the Spanish government's position is at the moment on the uh, self-determination of the people of Gibraltar. <laughs> it was the same. You know, we, we feel that um, the existence of a colony, colony sorry, in, um, in Europe in the 21st century is, uh, is an anachronism. Uh, we definitely want to, um, you know, get back our territorial integrity, but we are not out, uh, you know, to, to uh, make it impossible to have uh, uh, an agreement uh, between the UK and the EU. We are not going to make it more difficult because of the question of Gibraltar. Um, and our aspirations is that in the end, uh, we can find a solution that is acceptable for everyone. Yeah, it's just I, I do see that some people will see a certain parallel between the situation in Catalonia and the situation in Gibraltar. The overwhelming majority of the people of Gibraltar wish to remain part uh, of the United Kingdom. Uh, for you, it appears it's the, the territorial integrity of Spain, as with Catalonia, uh, that appears to be the most important thing, not the views of those who live there. No, it is, it's uh, the, the opinion of everyone who is involved and who live uh, in those territories is, is very important. But uh, the, those uh, things cannot be, um, uh, you know, the, the, there are no parallels in the, in the two situations. One comes from, uh, you know, from the 18th century. It's, um, uh, it's a remnant of um, uh, uh, bygone uh, times. Uh, it's a, a matter of um, uh, colonialism, um, and in any way, I have told you already that um, we want to convince those who live there. I think we have offered um, a uh, solution that is, um, could give them the best of both worlds, but if they cannot, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll look at ways how we can um, put an end to this uh, anachronism. Alfonso Dastis, many thanks for joining us here on Sky News. Uh, we do appreciate it.